Jewish people believe that there will come a messianic age when all of Israel will be saved and restored to the land of Israel. At the time of a descendant of David, the Messiah, who is righteous in the eyes of God, will sit on the throne in Jerusalem, and the temple will be complete again. They believe that a righteous kind who will be sent by God himself will unite all people regardless of race, culture, and religion. The movement for the building of the Third Temple had begun since the 1980s. These Orthodox Jews believe that redemption of the world will occur only when the Third Temple is built completely. On a practical level, the Jews are banned by Israeli law from conducting prayers at the site and those who actually visit are always accompanied by women in black who always maintain serious vigil on Jewish presence on this site. On August 12, 2022, the reenactment of water libation was held to prepare for the Third Temple. Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Shelters or Booths is a Jewish holiday. The seventh and the last feast that the Lord commanded Israel to observe, one of these three feasts that they were told to go and appear before the Lord your God in the place where he shall choose. The Jewish prophets had all proclaimed that when the last days are near, the exiles of Israel would return to the promised land and the temple would be rebuilt again. In Ezekiel 37:28, it's been said, then the nations will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy, when my sanctuary is among them forever. According to the Jews, the end time events are unfolding before our eyes. The importance of the Feast of Tabernacles is that it can be seen how many times in the scripture it was mentioned to point out important events. One thing that happened during the Feast of Tabernacles was that Solomon's temple was dedicated to the Lord. In 1 Kings 8, 2, it has been said, all the Israelites came together to King Solomon at the time of the festival, in the month of Ethanim, the seventh month. It was also during the Feast of Tabernacle that the Israelites who had returned to rebuild the temple gathered to celebrate under the leadership of Joshua and Zerubbabel, which has been stated in Ezra 3, and many events that went on in the scripture during the Feast of the Tabernacles. In 2 Thessalonians 2.4, it has been said, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. This is a reference that the Antichrist will stand within the temple of God. They will build a third temple again, and the Antichrist will stand in this temple, and the Antichrist will stand in this temple that they built, and he will demand the worship of everyone in the entire world who worships any God to worship him within this temple. The Jewish people are doing everything they can to build it, and not only that, but many of them hold this belief system that all the nations of the world would go there to worship, therefore making sense and leading to the conclusion that the Antichrist will demand everyone's worship from this third temple. In an article named Reenactment of the Water Libation Held to Prepare for the Third Temple, it has been said that joyfully shall you draw water from the mountains of triumph. This article states about the reenactment of the water libation that was held in the Temple of Jerusalem with several hundred participants by Kohanim and priestly guard accompanied by Levites playing musical instruments. The events began at Shar Haspat, the Dun Gate in Jerusalem city, where participants joined Kohanim, priests, and biblically mandated vestments, and Levites with musical instruments also wearing special vestments. The musically gifted Levites held the ceremony with joyous music on drums, violins, guitars, clarinets winding down ancient walkways into the valley below the Temple Mount. The crowd sang and danced as they passed from the archaeological remains of the ancient city of David through an Arab village to the Siloam Spring used in the Temple times. The procession was punctuated by stops during which four foot long pure silver trumpets were sounded. The event was overseen by Rabbi Israel Ariel, the founder of the Temple Institute and quite a few other rabbis. At the head of the parade was the gold vessel or the water jug. At the pool the jug was filled. The procession climbed back up to the top of the mountain in a model altar and its utensils had been set up in an open area adjacent to the western wall. The altar was decorated with large leafy willow branches as was done in the temple. The ceremony culminated in the priestly blessing after which the one seven-year Hakol ceremony was held, though not explicitly mandated in the Torah. The water libation is part of the old tradition passed down from Moses. 
Sukkot is a joyous holiday and the water libation was the focal point of this joy. In the temple, the ceremony would take 15 hours with accompanying celebrations lasting all night until the temple service began again the next morning. Nations came from all around the world to take part in the Sukkot celebrations making it an international worship of God. In temple times, the libation of water was made together with the pouring out of wine at the morning service on the last six days of the week-long Sukkot holiday. The Siloam pool, Sawan in Arabic, is a huge biblical import that will re-emerge when the third temple is built. The pool of Siloam was a starting point for the pilgrims, who made the annulling pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the biblical feasts. They would use the pool to wash and ritually purify themselves before ascending by foot to the inner court of the Temple Mount to bring their sacrificial offering. Located outside of the walls of the old city of Jerusalem to the southeast, the pool is fed by the waters of the Gihon Spring, which are carried there by the Siloam Tunnel, also known as Hezekiah's Tunnel, sometimes referred to in the Bible as the Lower Pool. The lower pool was built during the reign of Hezekiah at 715 to 687 BC to replace an old Canaanite tunnel known biblically as the upper pool that was vulnerable to attackers. The new pool and the tunnel left the besieging armies without access to the spring's water. Archaeologists believe that during the Second Temple era, the waters continued to flow south and were collecting in an additional larger pool. This pool was discovered during the summer of 2004 and is continuing to be uncovered today. It should be noted that the year after Shmita is auspicious for the arrival of the Messiah. The Babylonian Talmud and the Tractate of Sanhedrin 97a brings the verse from Amos which says, On that day will I rise up the fallen booth Saka of David. Amos 9:11. This verse comes in the context of a prophecy about God bringing the nation of Israel back from exile among the nations. Amidst descriptions of the days preceding the Messiah, the Talmud says, As it is written on that day, it will rise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen. Our rabbis taught in the seven-year cycle at the end of which the son of David will come in the first year this verse will be fulfilled. The Talmud is stating explicitly that the Messiah will come in the first year after the Shemitah. It should be noted that the Talmud describes the days before the Messiah in depth and that they are especially difficult times. The Talmud is not the teaching of God, they are teachings of the rabbis which are completely false. They have many prophecies within their own writings just like within the Quran. They have these things leading to what they believe the Messiah will come which are made up in their own writings. The Jewish people are saying that their Messiah is coming soon and that world events are looking like their Messiah or the Mashiach is coming soon. They don't accept Jesus Christ as their true Messiah. In 2 Thessalonians, it has been said that Jesus Christ will not come. The second coming of the Messiah will not come until the man of lawlessness is revealed on the earth. The Antichrist comes first before the true Messiah actually comes. It's very scary when we see these different religions, Jewish, Islamic, and even Buddhist people waiting for another Buddha to come when they're saying that there is going to be another Messiah, another Savior who is going to come to the earth and fix all our problems. When the Bible says that the next person who does that will create peace plans, but then they're going to break them and they're going to bring in an usher in the end of the world and a complete control of the earth trying to get people to not follow Jesus Christ to follow the fallen ways, to receive the mark of the beast, and to worship the beast, and the Bible tells us that they will be cast into eternal judgment, where their smoke rises before the Lamb of God and the holy angels forever and ever. We should keep in mind the timeline where the Antichrist comes first, then the true Messiah Jesus Christ. The Jews are going to build the third temple as they believe the Messiah is going to come soon, and all nations are going to gather there at Jerusalem when the time finally comes. The Jews believe that Jesus did not fulfill the prophecies of the Messiah, and this is why they don't consider him as the Messiah. The Jewish people believe that God has always planned to bring the Jewish people together back to their land where they truly belong. Just as the prophets had foretold, the Jewish people are returning to the Holy Land from all around the world after many centuries of global exile. Since the Jews believe only in the Torah, which consists of the Old Testament and many other books that the Bible doesn't have, it believes that the Messiah is yet to come. Not only are the exiles of Israel coming back to the Promised Land, but preparation is being done to build the Third Temple through the extreme efforts of the Temple Institute and the Temple Mount Faithful Movement. Whatever the case may be, 
something big is coming and the world needs to be prepared for it.